my dear ones. Hello. Oh yeah, the brain size, the MMS. Oh my gosh. There was the FDA on the MMS thing. I had this a long time ago. The FDA warns against using MMS because there's an industrial bleach. Oh, too many Christmas. Yeah. I love this quack one because it 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 it, it just you're not sure who they aim it to. Someone could take a picture of that and read it. I found that in the hospital. <laughs> Aimed at more people like me. Yeah. The reason uh, Pat and I got together here and talked to you today on this uh, subject matter I've been kind of hinting at uh, for a while. And I kind of want to, I think, uh, want to lead off by reading. This, this was sent to me by a viewer. And they found this comment somewhere, <laughs> and not on my channel, and they wanted us wanted to share it, but they wanted us to comment on it. And I felt it was good because it doesn't really, the person doesn't give their name, but the narcissist, do they? No, they just... Is that them? Uh, Gorski, MD? I think that's um, the person that came up with that, the website here. Oh, the website yeah. there? The PH Looks chart. Like well, basically what this is, is... A medical opinion, in my my opinion, a medical opinion of how they look at diets and things and why they claim it doesn't matter what you eat, mm -hmm. it doesn't affect your health. Right. Come. Now, that very statement alone is shattering when there's not one person I think on this planet would ever believe that. Even though a lot of people don't understand how bad proteins are for you and all that other stuff, still I don't think too many people that understand if you drink like we were talking about earlier turpentine yeah that you're not going to have a blowback on that and this starts off uh and this is a very narcissistic uh, point of view here it says hey i love you but it's great information i'm looking around on youtube and you always see it, it goes on and on and on that's it this myth uh needs to end and it doesn't say what they're what they're really talking about i think it's like in reference to um the alkalinity the alkaline, Acid and alkaline. Yeah, that's and, it. And how we have to be more alkaline and how that's better for preventing. Yeah, that's it. That's yeah. it. Because down here it talks about that. Mm -hmm. He talks about that. And he cuts down here uh, uh, nature paths, but in particular Dr. Young, mm -hmm. uh, the pH miracle. But we'll talk about that. This, means, this myth needs to end. The below isn't meant to be harsh. But the fact that this is myth continues to be perpetrated upon the masses does them a disservice. This violates very basic biochemistry, <laughs> as if this guy knows biochemistry. Now, here's a biochemistry teacher. So we're, we're going to examine this, okay? Uh, let me see, where am I? Okay. Bone is not. Bone is not broken down to alkalize anything, all right? So where we stop here. This is, yeah, this was a research article. Um, it's entitled, Excess Dietary Protein Can Adversely Affect Bone. I mean, it's already common knowledge that countries with the highest dairy consumption also have the highest levels of osteoporosis. Isn't that amazing? There's a direct correlation there. And um, in, this, in this research article, they're showing um, that basically they divide foods according to this PRAL, which is the potential renal acid load. And it's all discussing the alkaline versus acidic ash. It's hard to find it is hard to research find. articles where they include that or incorporate th that type of measurement. But um, they give each of these foods a PRAL um, number. And the negative numbers are more um, alkaline on the PRAL scale. And the positive numbers are more acidic. And the only ones that really came up as negative are fruits which were negative 3.1, and then vegetables, negative 2.8. Everything else was acidic. And the more alkaline they were, again, the negative numbers, they had a positive effect, um, less dietary calcium loss, better bone density. So those were the correlations there, whereas with the more acidic foods, there was more calcium loss in the urine and lower bone density. Yep. But where do you think the calcium's coming from? It's coming from the bone tissue, and as we see it, all of these structural organs in the body. Absolutely. Connective tissue. Mm -hmm. and that explains um, 
things like varicose veins, spider veins, petechia, herniations, aneurysms, things like this, because you have to be able to explain why people have these symptoms. And it's a loss of connective tissue, or what's connective tissue? And then you get into that sort of thinking. This, uh, I read this to him a little bit before, uh, down the way, but this is from the Division of Endocrinology and Metabolism, Department of Medicine, uh, Metaphor Medical Center, and the Albert Einstein College of Medicine, Bronx, okay. New York, and it goes on. So this, this isn't... This isn't one medical doctor sitting here touting off some ego. Yeah. This is a bona fide study and a good one. And what was interesting to me, which I did not realize over all these years, that the kidney couldn't excrete under 5 pH. It says here, yeah, it does say that. That, that, that freaked me out, which brings up a whole, whole bunch of thoughts in, in, in what we're going to tell them about sulfates in taking antibiotics, mm -hmm. you know, and that whole what can happen when you destroy the bacterium in the lymph nodes that are supposed to take the three because they they confirm just what i've been teaching for years that metabolitic wastes are three ph and they do do some, just like me they they mm -hmm. reference coca-colas and that's what i do because the minnesota school of dentistry sent me a bunch of ph studies that they had done and and it was coke pepsi each one is a little different but they all hover around 2.85 to 3.15, except for Gatorade. That was even more acidic. Gatorade was more acidic than <laughs> Coke. Wow. And I wondered why it, in the past when I was building a house or something, I tried to look for something halfway healthy. I think, well, I'm just going to hydrate here a little bit, and I'd get upset. Stuff. I did not. I said, no, this is acidic. But I didn't even think about it because they don't make those claims. They, they call it hydrating drink. You don't hydrate under the acidic sky, let me tell you. But it's very interesting because they talk about the 3 pa the 2.8 to 3.2 acids, metabolitic acids. The importance of having bacterium in your lymph nodes is to bring these up or down, depending how you look at the pH scale, to um, 6, I think 6. Because they're claiming, and this is these universities and colleges are claiming that the kidneys cannot excrete under 5 pH. Yeah. I, I, I think the understanding of that would put you down because I talk about that if you're peeing 3 pH you're going to pee on your knees that's true you're going to burn so bad it's, it's going to go you can put coke in your mouth and hold it <laughs> burns so this is this this was with excellent research mm -hmm. and there's more to this it goes on and on and they found even more research I mean more uh, there's other research on top of this research mm -hmm. what was this one here Daily urinary calcium was, oh yeah, I'm showing this one here, the issue was more, exactly what you said. And so, the importance of understanding whether your food has an acid ash or an alkaline ash, we're going to get into that a little bit more as I read on here, all right? So, uh, this violates basic biochemistry. Bone is not broken down to alkalize anything, and you just saw a report from major colleges demouncing what this guy is saying. Um... That is uh, pseudoscience. Pseudoscience. Huh? He's calling the uh, the Albert Einstein College pseudoscience. He's calling the uh, uh, Division of, Unco of Endocrinology and Metabolism, Department of Medicine. Uh, he's calling them um, uh, quacks, basically. Excuse me. Oh yeah, I need to see her. Uh, um, all right. Uh, bone is not broken down. All right, so here it goes, and he continues to say that is pseudoscience that's been perpetrated ad nauseum. Uh, uh, ad nauseum, yes. Nauseum. Why leach calcium when your kidneys <laughs> make bicarbonate out of the two most plentiful elements in your body? Oh my goodness! You know, just because someone understands the basic way we, within a certain range, buffer acids or alkaline substances. I mean, yes, there's the bicarbonate system, it, and bicarbonate is the most abundant buffering molecule in our body. But we don't live in, a, we don't have a lifestyle where we are living in this natural homeostatic range. We are continually going outside of that range. Well, that's an excellent point. And when we go outside of that range, we need then the heavy hitters. We need to grab the calcium from our tissues. Mm -hmm. So yeah, if you're eating healthy, if you're eating a normal healthy diet of fruits and vegetables, bicarbonate's going to be all you need. But if you go more acidic than that, and if your diet it has excess acids and you have a high stressful lifestyle where you're producing more metabolic waste, you're going to need more alkaline power to buffer that. Okay. And that's what they don't think. They think everybody lives in homeostasis, but we don't. And if we did, we wouldn't need allopathic medicine. 
If we lived within homeostasis, there'd be no hospitals. Absolutely. And I don't get why that, but when you create a whole consciousness of diseases, uh, they have nothing to do with biochemistry or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They, the diseases, the fake diseases, affect biochemistry instead of the chemistry you're consuming affecting chemistry. Chemistry affecting a chemistry, no, 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 no. It's disease affecting chemistry. Mm -hmm. And that, that, that's, that's where they have lost any commonality with any, anybody that has any brains. Because now you're working in a pseudo world, like he calls pseudoscience, that is pseudoscience. Because it has no effect, it has no consideration of causative factors, it has no effect of cause and effect, no understanding of chemistry and physics. It just says that diseases are what? Unknown. The pathology yeah, is unknown. Nowhere. Yep, come out of nowhere. Uh, they can blame pathology for some of it. Uh, and that's, of course, what they witness a, a scenario where you see a bacterial uh, in, involvement, and then suddenly the bacteria is the problem. Right. So again, as we, we teach from a naturopathic perspective or a God perspective, it is look at the cause of your problems. Exactly. You don't go to the effect of these things. Yep. Now, your blood pH must be maintained in a narrow range of 7.3 to 7.4, and I think most of us agree to that. Yeah, that's, that's mm -hmm. common knowledge. You can go up and down just a fraction, but, you know, that's common knowledge. With that in mind, think about when you're consuming, you're talking about out of ranges of homeostasis. Right. Think of the P Keegan pH water of nine. Yeah, that's, that's outside of homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So you're you're stressing the body, but you're going toward alkalosis, the other side, uh, and that's not good either. Uh, deviation by even a few decimal points is a life-threatening medical emergency uh, called acidosis, alkalosis. Yeah, he's got that right. It's true. Our blood does a very good job at maintaining that narrow range of a blood pH, and it uses the bicarbonate system to do that. But again. If it goes outside of that, because we don't want to die, because that's what will happen, we have to buffer a little bit more strongly than just yep. the bicarbonate. Yep, absolutely, absolutely. And uh, neither condition has ever been caused by food. Now, <laughs> now he gets more narcissistic as we go and just yes. slamming us, but he's coming out with this kind of crap like this, and it's like, oh really? You know, and this universe, these universities and colleges were talking about the ash, and that's what you have to consider mm -hmm. is the ash after you break down a, a, a chemistry. Uh, why? Because contrary to what NDs, not doctors. Yeah, ND stands for not doctor. Not doctors. Uh, Spoon, the food you consume has no bearing on your blood pH, not at all. Let me be blunt. <laughs> oh, yeah. There has never been ever been a case of either condition as a result of food, renal and respiratory homeostasis, the blood pH is very well understood, and uncontroversial, uncontroversial fact. Oh yeah? You know, and this is who he quotes. Insofar as there's no debate on this among gastros, hemiotologists, endocrinologists, it's just lay people and people who believe in alternative science. How is pH maintained? You know, and this is the sort of thing why medical doctors are, are at the end of the line, and if they don't change and they don't grow and they don't awaken, then they're done. Because you can't continue to hurt people in this new world that you all are helping to create. You can't continue, and the more you guys help others to become awakened to truth and reality, then there's nowhere you can go on this. So we've got a biochemistry teacher, an anatomy and physiology teacher, and so on went all the way through osteopathic school. So this is a person that sat and taught a lot about these things and taught medical students about that, and here's one that didn't listen. Didn't listen. Right? So how is pH maintained? It is maintained by your kidneys, interesting, uh, which create, recycle, and inject bicarbonate into your bloodstream. Which does this bicarbonate come from? It produced from water and carbon dioxide. Let me see here. And it goes to the lungs and the action for exhaling. Da 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 da. The lungs accumulate CO2 from the rest of their body. Blah 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 blah. We know all that. Acidosis and alkalosis are caused by surprise, surprise, kidney failure. Well, he's right about that. Yeah. He doesn't know how right he is about that. <laughs> exactly. He doesn't. He has no idea that that's as a profound statement, mm -hmm. but not from him. So it's interesting. And this could be a her, forgive me, I'm not sure. 
but uh, kidney failure and or severe respiratory distress. Now, I would agree to both of those factors. Yeah, and that's true. I mean, it's true that you know the kidneys can secrete or reabsorb bicarbonate hydrogen ion. As we breathe out carbon dioxide, we can also affect you know the the bicarbonate levels in our blood and, and maintain blood pH that way. But again, just because you understand the bicarbonate system in the blood doesn't mean you know everything about how we truly make sure that we're not becoming too acidic or too alkaline. I mean, this is just homeostatic ways of maintaining mm -hmm. blood pH. Yep. That's all he's describing is a simple textbook explanation of how the blood maintains exactly. blood pH. When you correlate that with this study, which shows you that all chemistry is broken down, obviously, as we know, into a particular ash. What is your bottom line ash when you break down a food substance? Mm -hmm. And that's going to depend on whether it's a high carbon substance, whether it's a high nitrogen substance like proteins. They're all going to have different ashes depending on their ratios of chemistry in them. That's right. obvious. Yeah. So to claim that when you consume these foods on a daily basis, that that bicarbonate system, which is a homostatic system, as you say, is it, going to be okay, it's going to protect you, that doesn't fit with symptomology at all. No. And, and, well, we'll get into more of this because uh, it's, uh, I want to get into the, uh, the applied theories. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, uh, let me see here. Uh, these are extreme rare conditions that lead to coma. What are you saying here? Acidosis and alkalosis are caused by surprise, surprise, kidney failure and or respiratory distress, as in not breathing. Uh, these are extreme rare conditions that lead to coma in cases of acidosis, muscle spasticity, spasticity, and alkalosis. You know, this guy is way ignorant of, of, of the reality here. Oh, way ignorant. People, there's probably only a handful of people in the world that does not have kidney failure at oh, one no. level or another. Yeah, the right? kidneys are... I mean, you would have to be an islander. Like I had a 96-year-old black woman here, Islander, looked like she was 50. And you know what she was raised on? Fruit. Yeah. She had all her teeth. She, her skin was popping like a baby's bare butt. And I'm going, you look good, honey. You're 96. She said, I'm 96. Now I had a 102-year-old man from one of the islands coming in one day. Getting married, get married for the fifth time. <laughs> fifth time, 102. And he needed help with a little winky. But it's like... <laughs> Look at this, and you can, when you do your own China study, and you look worldwide, you'll see the islanders are always the healthier people. And you go back to what, National Geographic, uh, um, uh, 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 Discovery's done a lot of research on this, a lot, man's an islander species, and there's more and more research being done on this. Okay, so what I'm saying, this is pseudoscience myth that has been perpetrated beyond belief. There is even sites that claim most vegetables are alkalizing, even lemons, which any layperson can test with litmus paper. They are very acidic, 2.2. More nonsense. That's what he doesn't understand. Yeah. He doesn't understand that there's an ash issue, that even though a fruit can be acidic, its ash is generally base. You might find some, but most of it is a base ash. Mm -hmm. A base ash means that's the effect you're going to see right. it have on you. Yeah, and, and that's you, really what we're talking about. That's really is what we're effect, talking about. You know, on our physiology. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Absolutely. And if you look at this, and you look what you were just saying mm -hmm. about this, is... Um, yeah, I mean, when you look at the most, all of the fruits, they, they come out the highest. And this is renal acid load. So... If you're in the negative, which the fruits are, that means that you're eliminating less calcium. There's, I mean, you're, you're just... Yeah, exactly. And there's... Exactly. A, yeah. So. Because when you have an acid ash, go back to realization that your body has to deal with the mm -hmm. acid side of chemistry. So when you absorb that into the blood system, you are absorbing an acid condition into your blood system. So it makes your blood have to rectify that homeostatically. But with that, the question is, where does that homeostatic end? Because a high-protein diet, which is probably uh, meat every day or beans or something mm -hmm. every day, you're going to way, like you said, go way past that because we see the effects of high-protein diets every single day here yeah. and what it can do to you. And it's just it's extremely acidic forming on the body. But a good way to, to prove that, and I proved this to one medical doctor, and a good example, he was in extreme pain in the kidneys. He came to our class, one class that we had at school. We had. Mm -hmm. I put him on fruits and the herbs. Two days later, no pain. 
Four days later in the class, we have a raw food kitchen. We show them. Uh, we fix Giuliano's meatloaf. I said, hey, doc, I want you to try Giuliano's meatloaf. You're out of pain. You're good, right? Yeah, I feel good. Thanks. I can't believe it, right? This is big genetics. So I gave him a bite of Giuliano's meatloaf, which is simply vegetables and nuts. He went, oh, 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 my God. What, what was that? I looked at him. I said, that's protein. And I said, you'll never forget why you don't give protein when people are in pain. Yeah. You know, and it's just proofs in the pudding there. If something contains more alkaline agents than acids, then guess what? It would be as alkaline outside your body as inside. That's, that, that's, that's false. That's false. That, yeah. that is a false statement. He, that, that, that is simpleton statement. That's right. someone that I don't know what to say about that. The laws of physics and chemistry are universal. Yes, they are, my man, and I would go back to school. Uh, beyond water, citrus fruit contains citric acid. That citric acid is what? Makes it acidic and makes it sour and taste it burn your gut. Something like that. Uh, by what magical chemistry equation does adding an acid to the body lead to alkalizing? Ash, digestion. Yes. Uh, seriously, if someone thinks it is false, please enlighten us. We are. We're enlightening you big time, Betty. But why verify acids in the first place? Why vilify yeah. acids in the first place? Because acids are corrosive. Now, you can argue, and I do argue, that there's very beneficial acids. No question about it. But we're not talking about three pH acids. Right. We're talking about estrogen, which is probably more like five. We're talking about higher acids that do not have the heavy corrosive effect and that has its neutralizer right behind it. Here's an example. Estrogen, acidic. Neutralizer, progesterone, alkaline. Everywhere you find the body's production of an acid, it has its counterproduction right. of its neutralizer. It's always balanced. Always balanced. God, whoa. Creator's incredible. <laughs> incredible. So he doesn't, he doesn't understand those things here. Uh, this is one that has me scratching my head most. Let me, let me be clear. An alkaline diet is a recipe for nothing but certain death. Most vitamins are acidic. Vitamin C is ascorbic acid. Guess what? We don't recommend ascorbic acid, especially intravenously, because you see what's happening with yeah. the injection of an acid intravenously? It's sucking the calcium right out of right. its basement layer of connective tissue and creating hardening of the arteries. And <laughs> so we don't recommend acids. We don't recommend isolates. And he goes on to panathenic acid, folic acid, uh, mm -hmm. your B12 are an acid. Also, proteins are stuff that makes us that makes up your muscles, organs, enzymes, and other soft tissue. It's always acidic. Protein is just lay speak for chain amino. Thank you. Somebody at least knows that proteins are chain amino acids. Protein has a nicer ring. Omega-3, 6, and 9 has been all the rage. It is a fatty acid. Even the building blocks of life itself, DNA and RNA, are acids. That's what the A stands for. Lucky the folks that push this stuff seem to think lemons are alkaline, so these aren't really alkaline diets at all. Don't believe me? Good. We don't believe you, man, because we've been years of working with these. Yeah. Years of working with chemistry and working with all this stuff. We're, we're well, gonna... it's kind of like, you know, in a lot of ways, when you want to try to control a population, you throw in a little, you sprinkle a little bit of truth, and then you confuse them about everything else. And that's all he's doing here. He's talking about the bicarbonate system. He's, he's sharing with us nucleic acids, fatty acids, amino acids. Yes, they're all acidic, and we don't think that people should be taking a high-protein diet, nor you know, high-fat diet. Right, none of these. He didn't say anything in the carbohydrate But he hasn't was mentioned acidic. the pH of DNA and all these other things, and yeah. that's what you have to understand. These are, depends how you look at the pH scale, high or low, but uh, these, these acids are minor acids. Yeah. Uh, now, think critically. Here are some credible notes. These are credible MD sources now, they're not. <laughs> Uh, here, okay, now here's this. The man who did the most to perpetrate this myth, just such a charlatan, his name is Dr. Young, a.k.a. Dr. Alkaline, and he's been indicted how blood pH is maintained from an MD source. It's technical, but the truth often is. We are oh, complex my goodness. machines. The truth is simple. Truth is simple. Alkaline's razor, you know, this, the simple answer is usually the one that is the most truthful. It's not complex. Complexity confuses and it's used as a way to control the masses because it will help people or will create people that just want to give up and say, I don't understand it all, so please, you in the white coat, 
take care of me. Yeah, exactly. And, and that's why we're so sick as a species, because people have given up their personal responsibility of understanding the simplicity of truth. Yeah. Uh, you know, there are different professors in this world, and that's why if I'd ever taken an A&P course from a professor that I wanted to, it'd be you, because <laughs> the way you teach and stuff is the way I like to teach, too. We want to make sure that they understand simplicity. You can get complex, but that's more for surgeons and things like that because no one will ever use it. And the more you cram, the less mm -hmm. spirituality you have because you're getting become a mind writer then. And then you get like him, you think you know when you don't know anything. You, you're out there, your ego's out there, you think you know, you're cutting down nature paths and stuff like that. And you're the one looking stupid. So, I mean, that's what's going on here. Now, let's see what else. Okay, this is from Quack Watch, one of the most cited <laughs> sites of the <laughs> crazy. Yeah. Oh, Quack Watch. Oh, Quack Watch. Familiar with that. So the bottom line to someone's theory, though, and I've always said this, and we've talked about this a mm -hmm. lot, the bottom line to someone's theory is applied theories. All right? I want to see your theory in application, which it already is. His theory is already being applied. The average American and the average world human is eating the way this medical doctor uh, is talking. Right. Right? The average person has more of a higher protein diet than a fruit and vegetable diet. Yeah. Right? And take a look. Now, when we apply our theories, which are, to me are not... We're very much into science and not pseudoscience. We're, we've got a science teacher here. So, you know, we, we like facts. And so, but when you apply, and let's just call them theories, when you apply both theories, what do you see? You see death in his side, and on our side, you see regeneration of tissue. Right. And we'll put that up any day in front of anybody anywhere in the world. And if you get medical doctors like that, put up or shut up. You know, I had a medical doctor come up to me once at the American Diabetes Foundation. They asked me to speak. And I'm the only one that spoke at the American Diabetes Foundation. I'm the only one that spoke about curing <laughs> everyone else, even Brian. Or at, uh, they asked Brian, too, from the Hippocrates, talk about curing anything. And I'm talking about getting rid of these things, mm -hmm. fixing and rebuilding and curing and things like this. This medical doctor came up and was yelling at me and said, you're Dr. Morris. I said, yeah. And he said, I heard you're telling people you could cure diabetes. And I thought, oh, here we go. So I said, no. I said, I, I teach them they can. Just, you know, just, just to get that away from me that right. way. Well, he was getting madder and madder and madder. And I said, and he said, I'm an osteopathic endocrinologist. I've been to school 15 years. 15 years, and I looked at him, and I said, you're an osteopath? I said, that's interesting, and I said, you've been to school 15 years? I said, what causes diabetes? I said that right to it. He looked at me, and he said, it's an autoimmune problem. I said, that means you don't know what causes it, right? Boy, he got red. And he just said something to me that, and I said, I'll tell you what I'll do. I said, I'm going to come to your office. I'm going to take 100 of your patients, and I'll show you what I can do to them. He turned around and walked right off. Wow. Didn't say a thing to me. If you're going to chastise us, you're going to come down on us, then we're going to come to you with the news media, because we're friends with the news media, and we're going to show you what we can do. And we don't have any takers on that. Isn't that interesting? I know. Yeah. So it was important, I felt, that we talk about this particular stuff. Someone sent it to me, you know, and wanted to uh, elaborate on it. And I think it's important because you guys are going to come up against medical doctors right. who do not understand the ash part, the alkaline or acid ash of foods. Exactly. And this, this study, they're showing it right here, that there's more renal loss of calcium oh, this when we have a higher acidic ash. You can find some of the best studies, honey. I don't know where you go, but you <laughs> find some of the best friggin' studies. These are studies that are hidden away. I mean, look at this. This is incredible. And it really brings up what we've been teaching mm -hmm. for years. You know, just what I've been teaching for years. But you know what? Observation instead of thought is how I live my life. So through years of watching and working with clients and looking at eyes and mm -hmm. observing, you learn, you, you learn that you, things you can't go to school to learn. They right. just don't teach these things. They don't even know them. But if you're a good healer, you're observant. You're watching. It's like how I learned about sulfur. I just yeah, kept yeah. watching and looking sulfur. and watching and looking and all the orange in the eyes, watch it coming out, getting the sulfur smells, uh, all that. Finally, it dawned on me. 
what the hell that was in the eye, all that orange in the eye. Mm -hmm. And you're about to talk about another study, aren't you? Yeah, we yeah. have the... Oh, this is the cool stuff. The one, uh, um, what is it? Get this one. Sulfated sure. polysaccharides. Yes, chondroitin sulfate B is has been found to help with the formation of amyloid plaques in Alzheimer's disease. How about so that? in the process of creating these protein clusters, you have a sulfate rich molecule creating the wrapping of these, you know, chains of amino acids to Bonding form them, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. See? And and sulfur bind, like you were talking about with the rubber. Yeah, with know? the rubber, with, with Charles Goodyear. Mm -hmm. You know, and that's the sort of thing we need to look at. So where do we find sulfonated polysaccharides and stuff? Where do we find sulfur drugs? Anti Antibiotics. Antibiotics. And I was talking to you about rheumatoid arthritis, remember, mm -hmm. in our meeting earlier, and I was saying that I have maybe seen one in my life, and I've had hundreds of cases. Maybe I've seen one or two that did not have sulfur in them. So when you see any arthritis, particularly the RAs, but any arthritis, lupus and Lyme, the one thing we consistently see is heavy antibiotic use. Right. So when you destroy your, your, your bacteria and your lymph nodes, how do you break down your metabolic waste? And if it is true that your kidneys can't excrete 5 pH or lower, you're stuck. You're in trouble because <laughs> uh, where, where are these going to go? You're going to accumulate them in the lymph nodes and they're going to swell. So now you have the potential of chewing on the lymph nodes and then everything backs up to the cell. Yeah. And these are facts. And we prove that by when we detoxify. That's what detoxification is, is riveting this scenario. It's just, it's getting these, these packed acids and the proteins that are surrounding them. I mean, it's a beautiful way in which the body tries to protect itself. Yeah, it yeah, is. But, it's, but we have to let the body know it's okay. You don't have to continuing to yeah. continue to protect yourself with all of these acidic products that we are forcing upon you. Yeah, <laughs> and that's important to look at too when you're looking at the sulfur uh, binding mechanism in this protein. So if you, when we talk about amyloid plaque, it's very similar to mucoid plaque. And I, I don't. I always thought these were very similar. Although I think mucoid plaque is more hardened mucus. Yeah. You know that sort of thing. On with proteins, obviously. Mm -hmm. But amyloid plaque, and we have. I don't know if we got them on our website yet, but we have an amyloid cell, and we have a normal cell to show them what an amyloid cell looks like. And oh, that's what you see. You see all the mucus. I don't see the sulfur on that, but we know it's there, and the proteins. So what has happened is. You have to understand that this is stagnation. This is a glomulation from acidosis. So what you have is interstitial glomulation. I mean, when you understand that 80% of interstitial fluid is lymph, and that when you, and it's, it's focuses the lymph vessels and back to the kidneys and skin, and when you don't filter that and you back all that up, in time you create a cationic environment, an environment uh, of acidosis, where things are dehydrating, and you're burning your electrolytes like crazy. The problem is, you're not consuming them because most people are eating an acid ash mm -hmm. diet. So where's your alkaline principles to come in neutral? Oh, bicarbonate. Oh, Jesus, criminy. So that's the part of the problem why people maintain systemic acidosis. Now here's one overriding principle to this, guys, a very important thing. It's not this guy's fault on this one, or if this is a lady, I don't know. But the overriding principle is he doesn't re or she doesn't realize there's two systems in the body, and the blood is not an acid system. It is the lymphatic system that is, and he doesn't understand the lymphatic system whatsoever, wasn't even mentioned. He doesn't understand that system, yeah. and is there any buffering bicarbonate in the lymphatic system? I no, don't I don't think so. I don't think so. <laughs> don't think so. Mm. And the reason for the blood is obvious, but not in the lymphatic system. Right. So that would be interesting to see. But I don't think so. I've never heard of anything like that. That's a really good point. I mean, yeah, maybe it's true. I mean, with the blood, you can study it. You can, you know, stick a needle in there, take things, take the blood out, analyze it. With the lymph, because it's so diffuse, it's really hard to just, really hard. you know, unless you're... You could pull it out of a cyst, maybe. Mm -hmm. You know, something like that. But they're not doing that. They're not That's doing any not of that. I'm thinking that. You could pull it out of a tumor. You know, everybody, you know, gets this. I was talking to them a lot yesterday on a video about tumors. You know, the, and biopsies and putting the metal clips in. Mm -hmm. And in fact, why even biopsy? Who cares if there's a cancer cell in there? It, it, you know, a tumor is an enclosed case. It's like a closet. 
when you have a abundance of stuff you don't want, you, you put it in a closet. Right. Well, that's what your body does. When your body becomes agglomerated, it has no choice. And at a certain point, it would be like New York City, when you had the sanitation strike, you know, the, the, the crap, the sewage got pretty high on the streets and pretty bad. Well, what your body does with that is it puts it all in a pocket. Yep. All right, I'm going to store this to protect the sur surrounding tissue. Right. That's only con that, that even makes it even more clear that the body can do that. Yeah. Tumors it up, cysts it up. And then when the when when the pathways opened up, it releases slowly and down yeah. it goes. You know the system, the philosophy of naturopathy. Yeah. When we study the body, the body is a beautiful. I mean, we we love life because all it's trying to do is protect us from our poor behavior, for from our poor diet. Jake. And if you know in in allopathic medicine, it's like they just want to attack and kill and. Ugh shoot you up with chemicals yep. and all we're trying to do is open up and release and Strengthen loving and rebuild, the body absolutely. loving the body back to a state of health mm -hmm. you know it, it's funny how radical that is when you really start to look at it from the naturopathic or naturopathy mm -hmm. point of view mm -hmm. and then you add you know you add from that spirituality from that point of view you know naturopathy tends to be more of a spiritual view it really anyway, is. you know so instead of just being focused in on limited things you, you're able to as we talked about earlier you know right. being able to put that all together so it's just working with nature to it, heal mm -hmm. and nature is truth nature is natural law is the only law really yep. that man has to abide by you know gravity karma it's all nature you know, what i think in science you know they they get away from the observa pure observation there's always a conditioned thought involved in science 60 minutes did a study on double blind studies they did a whole show on double blind studies. And what they found out, and this was on 60 Minutes, you can probably Google it, it's probably been 15, 20 years ago. But what they found out is most double blind studies are bogus. They're done in offices, little medical doctor's offices and mm -hmm. side junks where people should, shouldn't be in the study. This was 60 Minutes, not me. And, and they went on and on and on debunking double blind studies. Yeah. And at that time, I was doing a radio show. Someone called me on, I knew it was a medical doctor, about a double blind study. And at that, that, that particular day, Clinton was apologizing to a bunch of black people for the syphilis study they oh, did, man. the double blind study. That, that was in killed, St. Louis. Oh yeah, it's killed all the black. So it's like, gosh, gosh, I know. So it's like, that was a human experiment. That's terrible. Uh, <clears throat> you know, that's, yeah. oh, you, it, it's a sad thing. Like this one, you couldn't read too much in it because of how they arrived at some of this information. Well, that was the one, um, yeah, there was one where they were looking at cortical lymphatic vessels in the cortex of the kidney and they were studying it on dogs and it you know horrible. I don't you know when we have these the scientific research where they're using these beautiful living miraculous beings yeah, Chad, and, yeah. you don't even need to do the research because observation but you exactly. know what? even if that it's that inquiring minds want to know the problem is the mind can cause you a lot of pain really and lock your freedom away forever that's what we teach on this channel is how to get past the mind writers, you know, where you can free yourself up from this, where you can learn more instead of being trapped in various thoughts of philosophy and, 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 and the like and, and not be even true. You know, some people spend all their life believing falsehoods. They really do. It's very sad. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're not uh, we're meant, not meant to be on this planet to box ourselves into this little... Yeah. And, they, and they, they dissect and they find the smaller components of the even smaller components. Okay, so ask this. If there's only two forces at play, positive and negative, which side would they be on? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, not good. There was something else I wanted to bring up here that I thought was pretty good, and I can't remember what it was. was Dietary it salt through? affects calcium excretion. We had uh, uh, this one, too. I don't know. I think this was the one. What's that one on? Oh, okay, oh I love this one on salt. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is, let me show them. I don't know if they can see this or not, but these are, this is more your line because what she's got here is a picture of. Yeah, it's showing, the, it's showing the lymphatic system directly connected to the kidneys, and then they get into the histology of the kidney, um, the renal pyramids, and then the cortex outside of that. They call that a renal lobule. And you can see the, um, the arteries entering into the kidney, the arcuate um, artery, and then the cortical radiate arteries branching off of that. And following those blood vessels are lymphatics. And, I mean, 
when you look at any medical text, I mean, even the textbooks I would teach out of, there's nothing even showing a lymphatic system in I the know. kidneys. I know. And, and these latest pro charts I've got, they completely eliminated yeah. any lymphatic system in the kidneys for some strange reason, including the, the duct. And that's weird. And yeah. as you said earlier, they still believe that it goes to the kidneys and then up to the inferior. It's right. like, what? There's the eliminative organ. Why would acids travel from the kidneys, which are the eliminative right. organs, and then back up to the inferior fetal cave, up at the heart area? Right. Yeah, that, 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 that's like, are you guys taking some fairy dust or something? Or smoking something in the back room? And, because And they show that new lymphatic vessels form when we have inflammation because they're taking what's causing the inflammation away. So that's acidic chemicals. Mm -hmm. And they're draining it away. Why would we put put it right back into the exactly. blood. Exactly. Why? And they do show where the lymphatic system, and that's what you brought out, which I thought was cool, because I'd never found that anywhere, is the rebuilding of lymphatic vessels. Mm -hmm. Pretty cool stuff. Body so we know everything amazing. regenerates in the human body, including lymph nodes, lymph vessels, blood vessel, everything, yes. and makes new pathways to go around. But here's one for you. Remember I told you I worked on a C3, C4 quad? That's a high level quad under Christopher Reeves, but she only movement was her tongue and she had a little lever on her wheelchair and she could move herself with the tongue. I had her in 11 months totally reconnected and uh, she had a head on a car crash, complete spinal cord severation, oh, gosh. played it up like crazy and after we worked on her they found new nerve pathways all around. Wow. Is that cool? And that is cool. Now, in, enter this, this study on the size of the brain and the fruit. And we've been talking a lot about that to our friends. Okay. And, and showing how that this is just more confirmation that a fruit diet is vital to the homo sapien nervous system. Mm -hmm. Especially the CNS. And we were, there was something here about the CNS. Wasn't there uh, lymph vessels in the CNS? Somewhere I just picked up a research, something about brain lymphatics or something this? well this is that lymphatic system I think oh, yes. rewrite the textbooks mm -hmm. yeah I mean this is exciting stuff I really just is. love this I and mean, medical doctors need to get off of their high horses and get out of this sort of pseudo this, I won't say it's pseudo thinking but it's very it's very narrow thinking and some of it is just totally false yeah it's like they're wearing these blinders and they can only see certain things that fall in their paradigm of what they think is truth, but it's not. I mean, what we, what we observe, if anybody tells you that what you see is not what you see, hmm. then they might be, you know, trying to control you. They might be trying to create fear. <laughs> you don't really see that, do you? Yeah, that happens all the time, though. It's it, the obfuscation of truth. And they're, they're, they're really making people confused. I could go back to the preconditioned mind for that one, spiritually. <laughs> you know, that's the trouble. Your mind is a conditioned instrument. So guess who wants to condition it? Yeah. People that have that's more true. power. People that think they have power over you. Exactly. The narcissists. People that want to own you or control you. Like the world bankers and things yeah. like that. That's where you see that. Well, I, the first thing I would tell anybody is if you want to detach yourself from this, first thing to do is to get rid of your television. Don't fall prey to programming, because yeah. all you see on television is, you oh know, they're praising medical doctors. Yep. Every commercial, you, they, they have a commercial for McDonald's, right after that is a commercial for some pharmaceutical for heartburn. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of like the oh, insanity. Is, it is. is. It's <gasps> so profound, and people watch this, this over and over and over again, and then they believe it. Yeah. They the believe it's that like these medical worship. doctors are, are, yeah. are gods, yeah. and... Sad stuff. But when you, you, you do. You're sitting there wide open, and the average person doesn't know how to guard against that sort of thing yeah. in consciousness. You're not observing from consciousness. You're observing from the mind. Well, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So they can condition that mind. And, and, and they've been doing that for a long time. And when I was in the military, there was things going on there that... You know, I've heard they, stories, they, yeah. Oh, and, and they've been using uh, uh, bilocators for a long mm -hmm. time. I, I don't think people realize that, but back especially in the earlier years, they were really using bilocators. In other words, out-of-body travelers that could go into Russian meetings and stuff like that, out-of-body. Mm -hmm. Oh, no, they're, they're, <laughs> this I'm government knows so much more about psychic and that sort of thing than they'll ever tell you. I think there is, there is an agenda to keep most of the humans on this planet in a low state of consciousness. And socialism. They, it's called yeah, socialism. Yes, exactly. And Bernie Sanders is up there teaching that. And it's like, excuse me, 
people don't come to this country for socialism. They come to this country because it breeds individuality, freedom, and I can have, I can create my own business, and I can have fun. That's why they come to this country. Socialism, when we just move back to France or Russia, because Russia, communism is a form of socialism, basically. Mm -hmm. So all that sort of thing, I don't know. Yeah. But isn't this cool stuff? Because some of you guys are going to run up against some of these arrogant medical doctors. Now, these, these studies will be available. We're going to make these available. Yeah, the role of lymphatics in renal inflammation. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really important. Yeah. You know, and these studies are great if you guys have, because this, this does appease to the mind. But we already knew this stuff by observation. We already knew a lot of this stuff. Not so much of the inner workings and the chemistry of that. But it's in how when you have a study, it's what you enter the study with. You know, when you do a scientific study of any sort, you should have a totally open, not use the mind. First, you lose your consciousness. Uh, or you could use your mind if you could pull back and then go to consciousness and then place it where it belongs in the whole of things. But when you jump, the mind only works in pieces, as we talked about earlier, little pieces. So when you learn this and this and this and this and this, you don't have it. They're just pieces. You don't. You don't have it all together. And that's what this guy's just talking about pieces. And the way you teach is the whole. Yes. And that's the way I teach. Holistic. Yes. It's rare to get a college professor that's holistic in her teaching. But you know that's just the way of the world. More and more of our beautiful souls out there are yeah. getting into this, and some are teachers and all kinds of things. It'd be exciting stuff. And uh, this information, I mean, what you can do and what you can heal yourself, heal your loved ones, heal the world with this. I so mean, share this staff. information. Applied theories. Yeah. Look at the applied theories. If you think your theory is sound, apply it. But exactly. see what it is. See what it is in application. Because who cares what it is in the lab? But too many things get hurt in labs. They do. So if you stick with nature, though, what do you have to worry about being hurt with? I mean, for the intellectual, okay, but. The best healing doctor on the planet doesn't need to know anything about this. No. All they need to know is what type of, what, what vertebrae are you, what types of food is your body designed to eat, how to put you on that type of diet, how to use botanicals to go in and clean and rebuild tissues, yeah. and, and, and you're into regeneration mode. And it's that simple. Exactly. I mean, the proof is, go on a 40-day grape fast. Watch your pain go away, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. Watch your your body become more limber, limber and, mm -hmm. you know, you have... And I, I remember when I did six months of fruit, and I became so energetic, oh, yeah. I had to get out of my, my chair you. and run. Thank I you. had so much beautiful energy. I had three years of a fruititarian and out-of-body travels, mm -hmm. and I'm going to tell you, I just about went, whoo! Yeah. I had to come down and ground. Man, I was doing lectures on out... Because I, I first got into Ekinkar, no one had real conscious out-of-body experience as much. I was having them all the time. And so they were training me and opening me for sure. And uh -huh. so I was giving all the talks about out-of-body traveling. And the thing is, that on top of a fruitarian diet, let <laughs> I me mean, tell you, my body would cramp and ache because it couldn't handle the energy. I would go to Howard Johnson's and suck down ice cream. As bad <laughs> as I knew it was weak as well, I had to do something to balance out because if I didn't, I, I was going to leave. I couldn't uh -huh. stay here because it's like... You're just, you see how, through, you know, seven months, did you? Three yeah. years, and then you're, uh, I wanted, oh, I had, let me yeah, tell you. I had to get on the greens and uh, yeah. some yeah. of the vegetables. The vegetables are very grounding. They're neutral mm -hmm. in their effect mm -hmm. for the most part. Mm -hmm. They're not astringent. The fruit, though, that's higher energy. Yeah. And that's the funny thing, how a lot of times they'll say, oh, the uh, human brain became more complex because of a high-fat diet. Oh. Animal fat. No. We're, the brain, the neural tissue is electrical. The fat is just the Schwann cells that myelinate it, but potential. it's the actual neuro neurological impulse, that action potential. There's neurons. It's just sodium and potassium going in and out. And then you get to the end, there's a little calcium being released to cause the neurotransmitter to go across. I mean, we can get into all of that technical, but it's all electricity. It is all electricity. It's yeah, not stuff. It's not animal fat. We don't have to eat our little furry, beautiful friends <laughs> to have a high brain capacity. In fact, you have a high brain capacity, you should be expanded enough to know, I don't want to eat something that is a beautiful being and a beautiful soul. No kidding. You know, if you compare the difference, and you can test this on yourself. You, you know, most people already had a high protein diet, so get on a high fruit diet and look at your comprehension levels. Yeah. You know, the children that we worked on, <laughs> most of them, as babies, 
are now in college and they're they're not even in high school yet i mean these guys there was a young lad i worked on and he was a freshman in high school taking college courses wow. he was so smart and i I've, I've worked with this for years and i the fruit I mean, this the power of consciousness. I mean, it's amazing what it does to you. It's mm -hmm. just amazing. And what they do to these little children oh. coming out of the womb and getting them oh vaccinated, oh. it's just insane. It's insanity. It's They're insanity. trying to get them into this low level of, yeah. of just being right right from the beginning. It's so sad. I found her tape, and I'm cleaning up around here, and I was talking about it yesterday. So that's 10 pennies tape right there on vaccines. Yeah. She went into CDC centers to find out for herself. She's a medical doctor. Wow. And what she found was the CD center lied to the medical yep. doctors. Well, I think there's there's inserts on vaccines that actually share with the public all of the things that can result from, a, I mean, vaccines are not innocuous agents. Nobody ever asked for that, though. Yeah. Nobody ever asked to see that. The average parent trusts, you know, with their heart. And now you have Very millions of ADD, ADHD, mm -hmm. and tens and tens of thousands of seizures. So sad. Gosh, and so that's sad. just not showing you the ones that look burnt and everything mm -hmm. else from that side of it. I mean, it, oh. I mean, the things we see even in here with our clients. Oh, just, it's bad. Yeah, it, it chokes me up sad. sometimes. I saw Marcy one day. She broke down. She couldn't handle it. Yeah, it, it, it's incredibly sad. And even with the animals, and these little five-pound dogs, they're vaccinating. God. Stupid. I I've talked to him about vaccination yeah. last video. Even mm -hmm. rabies. I'm going, come on. I know. That's why the lymphatic herbs exist. You get bit or you get in any way spider bit, venomous bit, or rabies bit or anything, you just grab the lymphatic one. They're all for poisons. Exactly. They're all for hemo hemotoxins and cytotoxins. And yeah. That's what they're for. And they neutralize. You don't have to toxicity the body. But you notice how the medicals always skirted around the pharmacopoeia of nature. They've always wanted their own chemical. Yeah. Uh, oh. Of course, it's all about the money. That's what I see. I, I don't see anything else. That, to me, the Rockefellers who opened up and created the American yes. Medical Society and the Sun, the American Catholic. And they Society. shut down all of the naturopathic and all of the homeopathic mm -hmm. medical schools. Mm -hmm. Done. Mm -hmm. Trying to shut us out. Monopolized. But we've got them, yeah. who are the greatest souls on the planet, who are now helping others. These, I mean, these are the world changers. Yeah. And I love you guys. You guys are just so sweet out there, and we appreciate you taking your time watching yes. our videos. We wanted to sh I wanted to shoot this one for, you know, I've been out yeah, here for about a month. Yeah, we've been talking about this. But we hadn't had the time to get together. And so we wanted to go over that with him because I, I couldn't stand the narcissism of this guy. He's no. just slandering us, and I'm, I'm tired of that. You want to slander really? us? Come on, let's talk. Exactly. Yeah, let's talk in front of the camera. And, and, and we'll talk about, you know, what you think you know. Uh, it relates to health. <laughs> So well, thanks so much, guys, and I want to thank all of you, particularly for all the sweet cards and gifts yeah. that you send in here in every level. And if I don't ever hold it up and thank you, forgive me. I have it. I have my all. Everything you give me is on shelves where you can see them and Wait, display. Do you have this one right here? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. I showed that. Isn't that beautiful? Uh, oh, my gosh. She didn't <laughs> want me to show it at first. Oh, I thought it was. Isn't that gorgeous? I showed yeah. that. I won't show you who it is, but I'll just say that her husband is an incredible musician who uh, has uh, some good music out on tapes. Incredible <laughs> guy. Just to show you. Aww. So, uh, I think we're pretty good. Yeah. Thank you so much for listening to this video. I know we're a little like this, but, you know, when they come on and say crap and slander us and, and <laughs> crack watch and that kind of crap, it's like, come on. Let's, let's sit down. You want you want to talk? Let's talk, mm -hmm. and then let's look at applied theories. Let's look at your theory and application, and that's where we have them all around. We see it happen. We yeah. see the results. And it's just it's just God. It's just nature. It's just it's yeah. just life of how it is. It's just viewing chemistry and physics and all that and how it is, yeah. but putting it together. You can't just view isolates of chemistry, right. uh, and even you can't just view acid and alkaline and, and know what's going on. You mm -hmm. you know. You want the whole rounded view. You want the, a holistic picture of how it all works. And that, I would think, as a physician that you would seek, is you trying think. to have the Hippocratean medical doctors. No. And so the Hippocratean medical doctors would be those that would then want to see a holistic view of how it all works. And then when you do that, you're going to run into problems yeah. because the, the diet that this gentleman is talking about is a typical American diet. Yeah. And everybody is getting sick and dying they from really those guys.
Yeah. Everybody's on eight pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. I mean, that's kind of like the average. Yeah, yeah. When you're not, they freak out. You go in there, all the 70 years old, 80 years old, you're not on any drugs, you're going, you're not, you're not on any medications? Exactly. I heard one the other day talking this morning, you're not taking anything? It's, it's impossible. You can't, you can't. You know, they, don't, they don't see it. Thanks so much. Love you guys. And till we, till we meet again. Yep. Thank you so much for listening. Bye.